Okay, everybody, get yourself together. Get yourself together. We got about a minute. This train is pulling out of the station. Give a loved one, a friend, give someone a call and let them know. Give us 40, 45 minutes of your time, and I promise you, you will be blessed. Checking to see some of the people that's in church, just seeing who is in church. Thirty minutes, guys. Thirty minutes. Get yourself your pen, your paper, your pads, um, your device that you're going to be looking at, listening through, or what have you, and let's get ready to go forward in the Word of God, studying God's Word together, saints. Studying God's word together. What we want to do is to make sure we are aligning in right standing with God's word. Right standing with God's word. And remember, as I always say, you have to keep this in mind. When you're beginning to deal with the word of God, that is a spiritual thing. And so what we have to do is we want to take that which is spiritual and get it into the natural. That's what the word of God did. So we're going to call out to the Holy Spirit that we need help. One that will translate spiritual things into natural things that we can better understand what he is trying to convey to us. So with that said, let us go before the throne of grace in prayer. Father, we honor you, we bless you, and we thank you for this opportunity you have given us once again to come before the throne of grace. Now, this is one thing we know, Lord, that this day, Lord, you have made for us. We had no idea what was coming, but we chose, Lord, to trust you. But we believe your word that you have already metered and measured out every single thing that we will face this day. So, Lord, help us that we may be obedient to your law word, will, and your way. Oh, Father, bless us that we have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say. And as we have gone through all out this day, Lord, and we thank you that you have given us health and strength and gotten us through this day, but now we're at the end of the day. And Lord, we have set aside this time, Lord, in Bible study of your word. We plead the blood of Jesus that you keep our hearts and minds focused on your word. Let us, Lord, hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say unto the body, that we may be able to grow according to your law and will and way, Lord. I plead the blood of Jesus right now that you give us a childlike understanding of your word, that we may be able to get it, grasp it, Lord God, apply it to our lives, and then see the benefits thereof, that is, in growth. Oh, Father, in Jesus' name, I plead the blood of Jesus that you bless us right now, that we stay focused on the moment. Remove any distraction, Lord, that may go on in our life that we may, Lord, not be distracted in taking us away from that which you have for us. Lord, for the saints that are here right now, help us to stay focused in the moment that we may grow in through and by thy word. To those, Lord, that will not be, Lord, to those that will be joining us shortly, I pray that you get them to safe haven, Lord, that they may be able to sit down and hear, Lord, the word of God that is set for them. Help them, Lord, to be patient, Lord, until they can get to a safe place where they're able to view or hear the word of God tonight. And to those, Lord, for whatever reason that will not be here with us, I plead your blood, Lord, that you bless them, that you put it on their heart as a burning, Lord God, message that they may be able to get to the word of God and study it together. Now, Lord, let me say this before we get started. I lay myself before the throne of grace. If there's anything that I have done that is not pleasing in your sight, Father, please, I beg you to forgive me of it that I may be in right standing with you. Do not hold or withhold, Lord, thy word for me, Lord, that thy people may be able to receive it, Lord God, for growth. So, Lord, I pray, Lord, right now, with by my own free will, I want to give the Holy Spirit the power of attorney over this message. Let him speak to thy people, Lord. Let him speak to each and every last one of us individually that we may be able to grow according to the word. We thank you, Lord, for hearing this prayer. Now, I believe by faith that you have already honored this request. For this is a prayer that I ask the Holy Spirit to please deliver to the Father. Because it is both in the name and under the blood of our Lord and our Savior. For you are Jesus. You are the Christ. Now, if you're in agreement with that prayer, saints, you signify it by saying... Amen. Now, amen is just meaning you just put your stamp of approval on what was prayed. So that's why you should always hawk in and listen to what has been said. So when um, someone say to you, amen, if you don't agree with it, keep silent. Don't put your stamp of approval on something that God has not ordained. So what we're going to do is we're going to go now into the word of God. We're going to go back to where we left off at, saints. And we are really trucking through the book of Acts. We're actually coming up on the end of the book of Acts. And so in the book of Acts, guys, we're at the 27th chapter. Acts, the 27th chapter. And we had gotten down, well, started from verse number 18. And we went down to verse number 21, going into 22. And so what we're going to do, saints, y'all know it by now. This is called our ever popular slingshot effect. Everybody knows a slingshot and how it works. You put something in it, 
you pull back and the further you pull back, the further it will go forward. The resistance will take you further forward. So what we want to do is take the slingshot effect by meaning going back in the word of God that we may catapult forward into that which God is um, for us tonight. Just a rehearsal, if you will, um, to go back and just, again, the word that I'm looking for, um, not rehearse, rehearsal, rehearsal is practicing, go back and to look at something again, um, look over something again that we once were in. So what we're looking at, guys, is Acts, the 18th chapter, Acts, the 27th chapter, verse number 18 down to 21. Here's the account, guys. It says, and this is Paul speaking in this troublesome time that they're in, and it says, and we being exceedingly tossed with the tempest, the next day they lightened the ship. And the third day we cast our we cast with our own hands the tackling of the ship. And when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lied upon us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them. And say it, sirs, ye should have hearkened unto me, and not loosened from creep, and to have gained this harm and loss. So what we was doing is we were going through, and a couple of things that we just hit, um, we began to hit on, guys, and, and beginning to look at as Paul was beginning to look at this thing the third day, and verse number 19 was saying in the third day, um, um, with our own hands, we went tackling the ship. And we, we began to learn and study, and you need to get your hands moving. You cannot sit around and cry about what's not. You got to do your best. The word says after doing all you know to do to stand. Then you stand. And then in 20, we was beginning to just jump into an, and just wanted to let you know that um, you, sh uh, you should not care about what things look like. You should not care about what things look like. You should um, only say what God say say. So for God, regardless of what it looks like, guys, regardless of how bad it is, you have to realize there's power. The word of God says there's power. The power of the sentence of life and death is in your tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So what God is saying is you have to be careful what you say. Because it looked really gloomy right there, guys. Remember, and when and when neither sun or stars um stars and many nights had appeared so what they said the storm was darkened and for those nights instead of saying there's no hope for us i'm never going to get out of this i'm never going to get out of debt i'm never going to be in good health i'm never going to get that job i'm never going to this car is never going to work right always you're cursing yourself so god is telling you say what god say say in the midst of it all and what did god say in the midst of it all god says no um he says he would not allow you to be tempted above what you are able so whatever it is that you're going through you should just say say regardless of how dark it is you just should just say um lord i trust you you're not going to let me him. You're not going to give me more than I can handle. I thank you, Lord. You have measured this out. So say what God says. Say instead of I never get through this. It ain't no way I can make it. See, you're cursing yourself and the devil taking those same words. And that's what he's going to abuse you by. And so what you have to do is say what God says. Say in the midst of all this. And in verse number 21, we was beginning to really um, just point out that um, let things run its course before you um, jump in. You have to let things run its course at time. And that's what Paul was saying in the midst of it all. He's looking at all this taking place. It says, but after long abstinence, Paul stood, um, stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not loosened from Crete and to have and to have gained this harm and loss. So um, what you have is um, Paul is beginning to point out to him. Uh, the thing is, you need to, in the midst of this, you need to understand Sometimes you can't tell a person nothing because some people don't want to hear what you have to say. When a person wants to do a thing, they don't care about what you think. The saying goes, don't bother me with facts. My mind is made up. So sometimes you got to let people head hit the wall. You got to let them smack right into that wall. The, thing go, the saying goes, let them go and let them grow. That's what life will do. If it don't kill them, they're going to learn from that. You can tell a person all you want to. Don't touch. Hot. But until that baby put their hand on there and scold them, you don't have to tell that baby that no more. That baby will say to you, hot, hot. They learned on their own. So no, you don't want it to happen. But sometimes it has to happen because the person just won't get it. And so those are some of the things that we learned in the um, past last week that we was beginning to learn. Again, as I'm saying, in the midst of it all, you don't waste your time telling people things that don't want to listen. 
When a person wants to do a thing, there's nothing you say that's going to make sense to them. And no matter how crazy something sounds when they want to do a, do a thing, they justify it in their own minds. They justify it in their own minds that it's okay to do what they want to do. So we're moving forward, guys, as we study into the Word of God. And then we say this, guys, in verse number 22. Verse number 22, it says, and, and this is Paul speaking. He told you, you shouldn't have left in the first place. And if you wouldn't have left, we wouldn't be suffering what we are suffering. In verse 22, it says, And now I exalt you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life amongst you, but of a ship. So what he is saying right here, guys, this, now Paul, again, in the midst of this and in a dark time of your life, when people have hit their head against the wall and lost enough, when life has beat a person down, they are now ready to hear you. And that's when you have to take the opportunity to not beat a person up more. They don't need to be beat up more. That is the time for you to explain to them. Now, you can always hold that, that later on you can teach them. Um, you can go back and point to this situation or time in life to say, remember when you didn't listen and what it cost you? But right there at that time, your job is to lift the person up, exalt them up. Life had already beat them. That's what the storm was, the darkness, and day and night has been going, and they haven't seen stars, um, um, sun or stars, so they can't tell day from night. And so with that said, guys, in the midst of it, don't jump on them right then. They're ready to hear what you have to say. And so that's why Paul was saying right here in verse number 20, uh, 22, and, and now I exalt you, meaning, guys, I'm lifting you up. Paul said, listen, I'm telling, I'm encouraging you. Listen to me. I'm encouraging you um, to be of good cheer. In the midst of all of this, yeah, in the midst of all this, be of good cheer. Why? There shall not be, there shall be no loss of any man's life amongst you. But of a ship. Now let me tell you something. Sometimes you can do a thing that you've been born not to do, and you do that thing. You get out of it with your life, but you're gonna lose some stuff. And there's gonna be some stuff of value. Because on that ship was cargo, and cargo was merchandise, which was money. But what is more important, money or your life? See, you can always make more money, but you can't make no more of your life. And so what Paul is saying is you're going to lose your stuff, but you're going to gain your life. And so what you're going to have to understand is because you didn't hearken unto God, because you didn't obey God's law or word, because you didn't do what God told you to do, you're going to lose some stuff. But you will gain your life. That's why the word of God says, what does it profit a person to gain the whole world and then lose your soul? He then asked this question, what would you give in exchange for your soul? See, sometimes God have to let you know you're going to lose some things, but God warned you and got you out. Some of you got tangled up with some friends that you shouldn't have been with. And yes, you're supposed to have been with them when they died that day. Or maybe you was even with them when it went down and God got you out of it. But the thing is, now you have lost some things. What will you have to lose before you hearken and listen to God? The problem that we have is so many people have to lose so much. But God says, I don't come to let you lose things. I want you to have nice things. All I want you to do is to be obedient first. For to obey is better than sacrifice. God says, I just need you obedient. And if you are obedient, God has a promise for you. God has a promise for me. No good thing will he withhold from you. But the thing is, the devil tried to get you to get a thing first. Remember when you were younger and Christmas came around and you had toys that you was going to get and you got into the presents early? Now, they are already your presents. You just got into them early. And when you got into them early, all your excitement was gone the day of Christmas because you already knew what you had. But it is nothing like opening it. And look in there and see what you really wanted. It's there. The excitement for the moment. See, here's the thing you don't understand. Your excitement is gone. But what you robbed was mom and dad of the opportunity. Or your auntie or uncle, whoever that bought you the thing. You robbed them of the opportunity to see the joy on your face when you was delivered. Or when you, was, uh, when you received what you had. So what God is saying to you, many times, guys, you will find yourself in the midst of this. In the midst of this, you have to stand firm. God allow you to be in darkened times. And sometimes you walk your own self in darkened times. But it is an amazing thing to see when God brings you out. When you see no hope. When you see nothing in there. But God says, and somehow, someway, God make a way out of no way. The excitement that people around you begin to see is unreal. When you God just show up out of nowhere. 
to see the joy that is on you. But what you have here, guys, is you'll find out that when people mess up, you don't need to beat them up. You don't need to beat them up at that time. What you need to do is lift them up. Lift them up. Ah, eee, wasn't a good move at all, but it's okay. We're going to get through this. Let's clean them up. Let's clean it up, and then let's move forward. Let's move forward. And so that's what God is beginning to point out to you right there. Verse number 23. Verse number 23 says, now, what they want to know in verse number 22, Paul is saying, um, Paul is saying, don't worry about it, guys. I want to give you guys a good word. Be of good cheer. No man is going to die. Now, here is a thing that you need to understand. Because of Paul's status, he had the people's attention. They knew he had a walk with God. Do people have the confidence in you that you have a walk with God, that you have a relationship with him? That when people are going through a crisis in their life, they come and look at you and say, would you pray for me? Or would they say to you when they're looking at a situation or circumstance that is going on, they want to see what's your take on it. That's why you should be careful. So in the midst of this, they want to know, well, what makes you so confident? What, what gives you the confidence? You're on the same boat that we're on. You see the same thing that we see. What makes you so confident that we're going to get out of this thing okay? And you can see right here in Paul in verse number 23, he says, For there stood by me this night the angel of God. Whom I, whom I am, whose I am, and whom I serve. So Paul is saying, what gives me the confidence? I know my God. And today, this night, an angel stood by me of the God that I am. That's my God. He's my Lord. He's my Savior. So I know how he speaks. I know what he wants. Because I spent time with him. And that's what he was saying. For there stood by me this night, the angel of God. He specified it, the angel of God, not just any angel, because demons are angels too. All they are is just fallen angels. But there stood by me an angel of God, which means he comes with a word. He comes with a word from God. And God, when he sends his angel, the angel is not just there to walk with you and play games. The angel is there to bring you a word of encouragement or a word of warning. That's what angels are there for. They're not there to with you to play patty cake. They not, yo, uh, this is my best friend. I just want to sit and talk with him today. And he talked with me. You better be careful. Those are demons. Those are demons. But an angel come to bring you a word from God. If you're on track to encourage you to keep going on. And if you're not, to get you back in line. And so that's what Paul is saying. This angel of God, whose I am. See, I am the servant of the God that sent this angel. So this is a fellow laborer just like me coming to give me word and whom I serve. So you need to understand, Paul is putting a situation here is, is saying, um, I'm going to serve God and be there with him every step of the way. It says, um, so what it is, is you don't, um, you can't be afraid of people and letting them know who is your source. That's what Paul is saying, because I'm sure they want to know what makes you so sure we're going to get out of this. See, what he's saying is the angel of God. I, I know my God. And so you have to be confident in a crisis. What people is looking for is someone of confidence that know where they're going. That speaks with authority. And the person that speaks with authority is the person that's sure about what he's saying or what she's saying. And when the person is sure about what they are saying, they'll be able to speak with a confidence. They know it. I ain't trying to manufacture confidence. I know it. I know my God. I know he's not going to fail. And so he has given me a word to give you guys. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Why? Because God has already warned me. We're going to get through this. We're going to get through this. And so that's what he's saying. But here's the thing you need to understand. Again, he has pointed out to you. He has already pointed out sin has a cost. And what am I so fond of saying about sin? You can choose your sin, but you cannot do what? Choose your confidence. Your con um, you cannot choose. You can choose your sin, but you cannot choose your consequences. So that's what happened. They're on that boat. They chose to sin. They chose to go when they should have stayed. So dealing with all of this, you're going to lose some things. But Paul is saying, I'm giving you good words of good cheer. This is a dark time. And see, in a time when your life is at stake, you don't care about things. You don't care about things. You just want to survive. You just want to live. Again, we can replace things. But what you cannot replace is a life. Is a life. Sometimes kids do crazy things. 
And if a kid's ever taken the car and the car has been wrecked, you have a brand new car and this kid don't total your car. And when you get there and you looking at the car, how horrified it looked and twisted and mangled, you don't care about the car. Only thing you want to know is that the child make it out of there okay. You know, and, and you find yourself with all of the emotions. Go hug the kid and snatch the kid and hug him again and kiss him and almost want to smack him. These type of things because your emotions, a gamut of emotions. I'm angry at you, but at the same time, I'm um, angry at you, but at the same time, I'm happy. I thank God you are alive. And so Paul is speaking with the confidence. Do you have that relationship with God? Do you have that kind of confidence? That when you are one and um, God has spoken in the situation that you can speak with confidence to people no matter what circumstance that they're in. And again, that's what Paul was saying. For, the, uh, for there stood by me this night, meaning the angel came to me, um, angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve. And verse number 24, he says, and 24 he says, saying, fear not, Paul, fear not. Okay, again, saying, fear not, Paul. That's key right there. Saying, fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and, lo, God has given thee all, all them that sail with thee. Do, do you see what is taking place here? See, this is very, very important. My wife says to me, sometimes you're reading in a run-on sentence. You're running past um, commas and everything. Slow down. So again, as you, you're saying here, they're pointing out, look what he's saying. Saying. He want to get your attention. So this angel, Paul is saying, this angel, and this is what he said. Fear not, Paul. Let me ask you a question. Do God know your name? Meaning you have a relationship with him. Because this angel was very specific who he was talking to. Fear not, Paul. God needs to know your name, guys. Of course he knows your name, but I'm saying in an intimate relationship. He calls you in a certain way. He knows you. You know him. And when he speaks. So the angel said, fear not. Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. So if you're going to be brought before Caesar and you are here, and this is a tempest, this, um, the storm is raging, no matter how bad it looks, God has already told you, you're coming out the thing. Caesar is not right there with them. Caesar is not on that boat. Where is Caesar? In Rome. So no matter what takes place, I have to live to be able to get to Rome. Sometimes God don't promise some of y'all something. You don't forgot God promised it. And so every crisis that arises in your life, you think your life is going to end. When God already told you some things, you're going to see. If it ends, how you know? How are you going to be able to see the things God told you you're going to see? You say, well, how do I know God spoke to me? Well, why don't you know his voice? God says, my sheep should know my voice. And if you've been walking with God and spending time with him in conversation, you know his voice. You know what he sounds like. Now, what does God sound like? I'm going to tell y'all guys what God sounds like. God sounds like the person that's most influential in your life. To some people, it's their father. To some people, it's their mother. Some people, it's their pastor. When you do a thing that you're not supposed to be doing, you hear that person say, you know that's not right. Come on. Really? You hear the voice of that person that's most influential in your life or that's very impactful in your life. That's what God's voice sounds like. It's not going to be a big booming voice from the sky. No. You know, you're walking around as a nervous wreck. I mean, really? So the point that's being made in that situation, God's going to sound like someone that you have a great respect for. When you do wrong, you hear that person's voice speaking, telling you not to do that. That's the voice that God is going to use because that's who you're familiar to until you get to know his voice on your own. Now, once you get to know his voice, it's unlike any other voice you've ever heard in the midst of all of it, in the midst of a crowd talking, meaning in your head, a lot of stuff can be going on. But he speaks peace to your heart. When he speaks, it just brings everything to come. And although everybody may be saying one thing, you have that peace in your mind. Nah, I heard God. I'm good. I'm good. They can't understand why you ain't broke down and lost it. I'm good. I've heard from my father. And God says you're coming out of this. Now, because God says you're coming out, don't mean you're not going to go through some tough times. He just means you're going to come through it. You're going to come through it. This too will pass. And so that's what Paul was saying. There. He's saying, but, you know, you're going to be able to go before Caesar and lo. Not only this, now this is very important. He says, and also, and also, 
God has given thee all them that sail with thee. So here's the thing you need to understand. It's good to know some godly people because sometimes you live off their blessings. Just because you're in the vicinity of that person, God will bless you. See, these people was going, you had criminals on this boat. Because remember, Paul, they was, um, the centurion was taking some um, um, prisoners to Rome. So you had criminals on the boat, you had soldiers on the boat, you had entrepreneurs on the boat, you had um, a business people on the boat. And so all of them, because of who they was around, their lives was being spared. See, because you walk upright with God and live righteous before Almighty God, there's a lot of people around you that will live because of your life. Sometimes in the car, there's a terrible wreck. The car can't blow up in flames and die because God says you in it. And so because you in it, you save that nut that's with you. Sometimes, guys, it's your righteousness that you walk before God that saves other people. It's your righteousness that protects them. That's why I'm so fond of saying I refuse to believe. I, I don't have a problem when God bless people around me. I, I'm not. I'm never in a point where I'm um, jealous or hating on a person because God blessed them. Because I'm fond of saying I refuse to believe if my father is in my neighborhood. He's not coming to see me too. So it's just an incredible thing, guys. So I'm not being around people. But see, if you're around people that all they do is they're doing things against God's word, well, guess what's going to fall on them? Calamity. And you'll find yourself right around with them. Sometimes you're in a state of guilt by association. Well, just like that, Paul, because of his righteousness, sometimes you can find yourself blessed by association. So who is it that you're hanging around? Who is it that you're hanging with? Is it that you are one that's radiating off blessings or you constantly always sucking blessings? Do you not know the same God that radiated, radiated blessing off another person will radiate blessings off you if you live righteous? And so that's where you see where the angel is quite clear as he's pointing out things. He's telling Paul saying, fear not, Paul, he know his name. The angel knows his name. Fear not, Paul. Thou must, thou must be brought before Caesar. So you're going to finish your um, purpose. God has a purpose for you and for me. And there's a lot of obstacles and roadblocks, roadblocks and barriers that's in the way. But you're going to get through all of them. You're going to get to your finish line. What was Paul going to Caesar? So in the midst of it, he was going through some ups and downs, some night and days, some rain and some sunshine. But God has already told him, you're going to get to Caesar. Because it's something God wants to do in Rome. And so you'll find there, he says, and also, not only are you going to get the season, also, God has given thee. Now, why didn't he say God has given thee? Sometimes, guys, when you live in righteousness, God will sometimes say, not only am I going to bless you, but what else you want? No good thing would I withhold from you. If you seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, God says, all these other things will I bless you with. You don't have to worry about some special name to a car. You don't have to worry about some zip code that you want to live in. You don't have to worry about these things because God has already pointed out to you. What? God is simply saying, if you honor me, not only would I give you, um, give you this right here, but there's some other things I would give you. And not only would I bless you, but because I love you, God says, I will hear you out when you ask for a blessing for somebody else. When you ask for a blessing for someone else. And that's what Paul was doing. So he said, go before Caesar. And the angel says, also, I'm going to give you all of them that's selling with you. So whether they hated Paul or didn't. Now, like, picture this thing. You have to focus on this. Paul was sitting there watching these people when he already done warned them. And then he was over um, his, it, pretty much he was overruled by people of higher authority. Now, let me say this to you. Sometimes God going to give you a thing to say. Just because God give you a thing to say don't mean that thing is going to be done with. OK, God may give you a word to give somebody and they may not accept your word. Your job is not to make nobody do nothing. Your job is to just say what God say, say. That's your job. The problem with some believers is they try to make people obey God. You can't make nobody do nothing. You can't make. Only thing you can say is, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, so your thing is you tell them and you do what you want to do. Or you do whatever you want to do. But Paul sat there and watched all this going on. Because Paul is at peace in the midst of all this storm. They are the ones that's fearful and scared, shaking, and all these things. Why? Because they don't know if their life is in their hand. But Paul already got a word from God. I'm going to Rome. So however this is going to happen, I'm good. I'm real good. 
And so that's what you have to have that relationship with God. Because when you have a relationship with God, it's like a, um, um, if you were a movie, you haven't seen it before, but you are a book. You can go to the end and read the end of the book and then go back and start reading the book. Because no matter how much of the thrill ride it takes you on the movie or the book, guess what you already know? You know what the ending is. So when God has already told Paul, you're going to get to Rome, he ain't even concerned about all of the hoopla and the storm and all of this. Sometimes in the midst of it, I'm telling you, some, I, I, for me, this is just me, guys. When I feel like my life is in most danger, I just become a, very observant to everything around me. Not in a scary way, but if I feel like I'm going to die. Okay, example. When we was on an airplane, I'm sitting there, my wife and I, we're flying on an airplane, and I'm thinking, okay, you're totally helpless in midair. That's nothing you can do. You're a long way from the ground. And if something happens to that plane, ain't nothing you can do. But, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, if this thing started going crazy, we're going down, I'm going to just look at it to the end. I wonder what I'm going to see when this thing ends. I'm just curious. Because I already know where I'm going in the end. I already know where my outcome is. Because it's according to God's word. So you can have a peace at a thing at this situation. I'm sitting there and just looking at it. That's what I'm looking at. So the thing is, that's what Paul is saying. Um, the angel is going to give him not only his um, life, but he said, because you, um, because of you, I'm going to give some other, I'm going to give you other lives also. Sometimes your obedience will bring others in. Sometimes your obedience will save others' lives. Sometimes they just get the credit because of who you are. Sometimes somebody can know you real well and bless you and the person with you. You got to be careful who you hitch yourself to and who you keep hanging around. They can hold up your blessings or they can either take and um, enhance your blessings. Guys, you got to be careful who you hitch yourself to, okay? So, in verse number um, 25, so remember what Paul did, he began to deal with him. He told him, I'm already, I, I have my source. My source is my God. I'm good. I'm real good. So don't worry about me. I'm good. And they're looking at him with such confidence. And he's saying, well, how do you get this information while I spoke to my God? Well, what do they have to go by with Paul? Well, they already have his testimony. He's already known about, uh, known by all of them. He's already spoken on their behalf and told them what they shouldn't do. So if he's been right all this time, why well, I'm not going to believe him this round. I don't get it my way. My way has a, I have a disaster about it. So why would I just listen to what he has to say this time? We did it our way. But I'm going to show you something that was hilarious to me as I was beginning to read. It says, it says in verse number 25, Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it should be even as it was told me. So I don't care what y'all feel about the matter. I believe God. If he said we okay, we okay. If he says this thing, if he says this thing is, 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 is going to burn up, it's going to burn up. But when you know God's voice or when you have that confidence in where you are, not only who you are, but whose you are, you have a confidence about yourself. You think differently. You think differently. My dad, as I told you guys, I love that man because he taught me so much in the word of God. And a lot of the character and humor that you see with me, it comes from him. He was just a humorous person. I love that man. I love him. But I can recall one time my dad had went to jail. It was in the, it was in the earlier, uh, older age. Something that was like decades ago. They went and got him and said, this is odd. Even this situation. But they put my dad in jail for it. So he was in jail. It just so happened. He was in a cell with one of my friends. And it was hilarious. Because I thank God. Because it was a record that was kept. And so... And my friend was telling me, he says, we was there and we looking down and the fire department was down in there. He said, I was scared because I'm locked in the cell and, and I'm sitting there and, and I'm like, this place is going to burn up and we're in it. I can't go nowhere. I'm locked up. And he said, my worst fears was there. He said, and I was looking at your daddy and he was laying on the thing. And I said, man, don't you, you, you don't you think, what you think about? We're going to burn up. We might burn up. And my dad says, well, I hope you know Jesus. <laughs> so I just said, I love people with that mentality. Well, ain't nothing we can do about that. We guess we just going to die the end of the day, son. And so, so the thing that's been amazing, guys, to this is when you know God, when you know what God has said, you're not concerned about what things look like because I know what things are going to be. If God said you are coming out, you are coming out. And if God says you're going to be blessed, you're going to be blessed. And if God says you shall live and not die, I don't care what it looks like or feel like. You shall live and not die. God says, let God be true 
and every man be a liar. You have to understand when God say a thing, you have to stand on the authority of what God says. And your boldness in what God says will leave people in a state of awe. It is just something about a person that has a confidence about themselves, not arrogant, but a confidence about themselves and walk in it, unshaken and unmoving. People look at this and they just don't know how to take you or deal with that situation. But people will gravitate around you and follow you and they want to know a few things. And so they want to ask you questions. Well, what do you think about this? Well, they're not asking you per se. They're asking the confidence that you absorb from you. And what is that? The Lord Jesus. Let me pray about it or give them an answer via the word of God, not your opinion. Give them God's word and you'll find out that God will deliver you through every single time. So that's what he said. Now, listen at this now, guys. And so we're going through and you're beginning to find out right there. Um, you have to be able to, um, again, in verse number 25. OK, wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it should be even as he told you. You got to speak up for God. When people want to make you look like a fool, don't worry about people that laugh at you or pick at you for saying, God told me. They're going to like, what do you think the devil's supposed to do? They're supposed to try to make you shame. But what you do is you stand in the confidence of knowing if God told it to you, I don't care if you laugh at me. But watching the end, I promise you, they're going to see that you're going to find yourself standing while the rest of them crumble. Because God's word is always going to be fulfilled. And so that's the thing you say. But he's saying here in verse number 26. Verse number 26, he says, how be it, we must first be cast upon a certain island. So here's the thing that you need to understand in verse 26. What's got to happen will happen. Don't try to, you can't change what's going to be. There are certain things in your life you have to go through. What's going to be is going to be is what Paul is saying here. How be it, we must first be cast upon a certain island. I don't care what it is. We're going to have to go here. Certain things you're going to have to deal with. Certain things you're going to have to face. You can't circumvent it. You can't get around it. You can't not make it happen. It's going to happen. So some things just going to happen. So if God said it, you ought to be able to go ahead and deal with it. So I'm one of those type of people. I'm not going to prolong it. If it's got to happen, let's get it over with. Let's get it over with. But so many people spend so much time prolonging the thing. Prolonging it. Going back and back and back. But sooner or later, you got to come to it. See, I'm one of these people that believe this. I do math, and math is simple. Math ain't swinging to the left or the right. Math is what it is. And if a storm is coming at me at five miles per hour, and I know there's no way for me to get around that storm, I'm going to run to that storm at five, mile, five miles per hour. Now, if I'm running to that storm at five miles, and that storm is coming at me at five miles, how fast am I going through that storm? You're going through that storm at 10 miles per hour. But some of you guys would choose to start running from the storm and the storm overcome you. The storm is moving at five miles per hour and you are moving at five, five miles per hour trying to get out of the storm. You're going to stay in the storm because you're going to keep a neutral ground. If it's moving at five and you're moving at five, you're staying in the storm. But if you just simply turn around and go the way God told you to go, certain things cannot be circumvented. You have to go through it, saints. You cannot run from it. So deal with it. And I don't care how bad it looks or how big it is. A big problem with you with God is a small problem. But a small problem with you without God is a big problem. So my thing is, run to this thing and trust God. Believe him every step of the way. And I assure you, God will, God will surely see you through. Understand, guys, you need to keep it in mind. What's going to happen is going to happen. But so many of us, Try our best to get around what God said would be. Let me tell you this. The word of God says, all, not most, not some, but all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You can run from it all you want to. You can try to get around it all you want to. You can try to be liked. You can try to fit in. But if you are one that love the Lord and obedient to his word, you're going to suffer persecution. So don't run from it. Go ahead and get to it. Let's get it on. If it's going down, let's get it over. Let's get it over. Because the faster we get this over, the faster you can move on. Guys, I thank you so much for the time that we have had in the word of God tonight. Let's pray that God seal this word up and keep it in our hearts. 
Father, we honor you, we bless you, and we thank you for who you are and for all that you have done. Oh, Father, I plead the blood of Jesus right now that the message that has come tonight, that the people of God are able to take the word and apply it to their lives. Oh, Father, help us to think deeply about what has been spoken tonight to us and help us to grasp that and uh, take that and hold that to our hearts near and dear. Help us to hold fitly, Lord God, to what it is that you have said to us that we may make sure we may put it to our lives to see that it is tailor made for our lives. Oh, Father, do not let us try to circumvent your word and get around it to find an easy way to it. You have measured out everything that we should face for our benefit, that we may be strong enough to deal with the issues at hand. Oh, Father, be merciful to us. Be merciful to us, Lord, that we may grow according to your law, word, will, and way. Bless the message that your anointing may be on it, that the people of God may hear it and apply it to their lives. And if you would do this for us, Father, we would be so careful to give your name to praise. For this is a prayer that we ask the Holy Spirit to deliver to the Father. For it is both in the name and under the blood of our Lord and our Savior, for you are Jesus. You are the Christ. Amen. So, one thing we're going to say to you guys in that whole situation. Um, in the midst of it, I pray that something was said that is beneficial to you guys. Beneficial to you in this walk that you have with Christ. Very beneficial in your walk that you have with Christ. Now, let me ask this question. In proclaiming the word of God tonight, in, in exegeting the word of God tonight, let me ask you. Is there anybody that may be viewing this page or this channel right now and you find the word of God has touched your heart, that has called you out, and now you are ready, you have heard his cry, you are ready to give your life to Christ. If you are one who do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and would like to know him as your Lord and Savior, I have good news for you. I want to walk you through God's plan of salvation. Now, before we move any further, let me ask this question. Is there anyone out there or out here who once knew Jesus as your Lord and Savior and you turned and you walked away and now you want to rededicate your life to Christ? If you're that person, I want to walk you through God's plan of rededication. If you would, come and join hands with me with the person that never knew Christ. Don't worry about what people around you think. This is a personal conversation right now with you and God. Let's pray. Just say, Father, I thank you for this opportunity that I have before me today. I thank you, Lord God, that you have given me an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say to me today. And I want to take full advantage of this opportunity. I start, Lord, by repenting of the life of sin that I have been living. Forgive me, Lord, for living your life my way. I ask you, Jesus, if you will come into my life and sit on the throne of my heart, I will serve you all the days of my life. I right now, of my own free will, confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart that God has raised him from the dead. And I open my heart to say, Jesus, come and save me. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of Almighty God. Welcome home. If you will put that down in the comment section, we will celebrate with you with the decision you have been made, that you have just made. No greater decision can one make. And while all heaven is rejoicing and throwing a party because the soul that has given a life to Christ, the father slipped out the party. And when it found that one that had walked away. And while everyone is celebrating and in great joy for the person that got saved, the one that never knew God, God walks in with the lamb that was lost and brought him back. So if you are either one of those two, if you put it in the comment section, we will celebrate with you. We will thank God for you and celebrate with you because of the decision that you have made. Now, you may ask, now, what do I do now that I have given my life to Christ? Which way do I go? Well, you get in a good Bible-believing church 
And what you do is sit down and learn under the word of God. Now, you may be even be confused and say, I, I don't know um, a good Bible believing church. I just have a problem finding one. Well, stay here with us. Stay here with us until you grow into such a manner to where God pushes you out to where you are there in a Bible believing church. Now you say, well, I want to be a part of Firm Foundation. I want to grow with this ministry. What does it, what does it mean? Or what do I need to do to be a part of Firm Foundation? Well, what you have to do is two questions that we ask you. One, do you believe that the Bible is the true word of God? You say, yeah, of course I believe that. Okay, well, you're halfway there then. The next thing we ask is, are you willing to obey the rules and the regulation of this ministry so as long as they line up with the word of God. You say, uh, yeah? Okay, well now I say work up the firm foundation of outreach ministry. A ministry that loves people right where they are. And push them towards where God wants them to be. So if you did that, we want you to put that in the comment section. The next thing you may say is, okay, I want to come and visit you guys. Where are you located? We are located in the city of Kernersville, North Carolina. 1851 Highway 66 South in Kernersville. Google it. Come visit us, guys. Come visit us, that we will sit down together, give you a hug, give you a handshake, and be able to, uh, just together, celebrate with you. You may say, well, I want to just be able to support this ministry financially. I don't care what things are going on. It takes money to run things, so I want to support this ministry because I believe in it. Well, you can go right down this page, this channel, and there's a QR code where you can give, or you can go snail mail. Mail it to Burn Foundation Outreach Ministry. 1851 Highway 66 South in the city of Kernersville in the city uh, in the city of Kernersville in the state of North Carolina. If you would do that, we would celebrate with you. We want to thank you for the time that we have had. We thank you for spending time right here with us and look forward to you being right here with us Sunday morning, 10 a.m., right here on this page, right here on this channel. Please join us and we'll be blessed together in Jesus' name. See you next week if the Lord's will.